This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 904 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you, one day at a time. horse people coach jen here and thanks for tuning in to horse tip daily today dressage radio show co-hosts reese kofler stanfield and philip parks answer a listener question about getting things back on track when things go wrong during your competition performance and we'll get right to our tip after this educational tip from kentucky performance products Hi, Glenn the Geek here from the Horse Radio Network, and I'm here with Karen from Kentucky Performance Products. We're going to talk about omega fatty acids and equine nutrition. It's called Contribute. That is a fish, it's a combination of fish oil and flax oil, and it provides a complete complement of omega-3s. Okay. It has an 8 to 1 ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s, and it contains the plant and marine sources of omega-3s. Now, there's been in the past, there's been some palatability issues with fish oil. I don't know if you've ever smelled some of the fish oils. Mm-hmm. Lots of horses will run to the back of their stall and just stand there going, oh, <laughs> my right. God, Mom, what did you put in my feed? <laughs> some of the human pills are like that, too. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, you can really take it. So we do a lot of research with our product, and we got a fish oil that um, uh, just on its own smelled pretty good, and then we've added some flavor, some cherry flavor to it. That has made it very palatable. So we have very few horses turning it down. And like anything, you have to introduce it slowly and should introduce it slowly anyway to the horse. But we have very few horses that will turn it down. Well, that's uh, that, that's terrific. It's good to learn. I never knew about the ratio between the threes and the sixes. And, of course, you can find out more information on Kentucky Performance Products' new website. has a terrific, a terrific article on this, and we'll link to that in our show notes as well as on our Facebook page. And Or you could just go to kppusa.com to find out more about omega fatty acids and the Contribute product. Just look under Products. Well, I'm really pleased tonight to be able to get to a listener question. We love the, you know, getting them in, and we always encourage people. But we've got a few a little bit on backlog, so uh, hopefully we can catch up really soon before the new year and uh, and get to all these questions. So, um, the first one here that we've got is uh, I'm just going to read the email. Okay, there's no name on this one, and that's fine. So. Um, it says, I ride at first level. At homeschooling, I can do every movement in my test almost every time, and even in the warm-up rings, things go pretty well. I feel confident, and so does my horse. But when we do a test of the show, we start out just fine, but after even a tiny lapse in concentration, I can't get it back together. For example, if our transition from length and trot to working trot is a little sluggish, the remainder of the test seems sluggish. Or if his shoulder is out through a corner, our next three movements, I have a crooked horse. Help me out. What do we got here, Reese? How are we going to fix this? Yeah, well, this is a common problem. <laughs> and, and I'd like to say that, you know, I'm always perfect and ride great tests and I never have this problem. Um, and I would be lying. Uh, let's face it. So, um, you know, my first thought with this is I am, I am a fan of practicing the test. And, and maybe you're not practicing the test exactly how you're doing it. But you need to know some areas that are going to be tricky for you so that you can ride through them at home, but you can also do your mental preparation for it. So you are prepared that if his shoulder goes out, for example, in the corner or in the lengthening or, or whatever you feel is sort of your major pitfall, I think it's really important to ride through that in your head and troubleshoot it in your head, but also in training. So I think um, for me, I would – this have this rider, we would ride the test a couple times. And maybe you're showing first level test three, for example. You don't just have to ride first level test three. You can ride first level test one and two, maybe second one. I mean, it, 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 sometimes it's just practicing the test movements as you're going to do them in the horse show. And it's very common, I think, you know, we all ride around at home, but it's very different when you go down the center line. Um, and I've also even had people, I mean, 
we go to schooling shows and we have a nice schooling show circuit here in Lexington. And, and we're pretty lucky in that sense. Um, but when we go to schooling shows, we are dressed, the horses are braided, and there's a reason for that because it feels different. You know, it, even if you shine your boots a little differently or you're wearing a different – your di- different britches that you wear every day or maybe you have your show boots on and you haven't had those on. So when you get into the horse show, I try to minimize all that kind of different feeling. That's number one. And then we also do our mental preparation – Really practice that. I think that that's important. And practice it. Not that your mental prep is always perfect. You know, practice. What if my horse breaks um, to the canter and the lengthening? You know, think of some things that you're going to do because you've got to be able to do them without circling or, you know, taking five minutes to get back on your line. You have to do it. And that's the hard part of the test. So that is one of the things that I would encourage. Um, And just really be ready, be prepared You know, you should always be showing a level if you can. It's not always ideal. Sometimes you can't do it, but showing a level under that you're schooling at home. So you should be really proficient in the in the in the test. Um, So that's kind of what I would do, Philip. What are some some tips that you would do? Um, Well, I I see this issue uh, a bit in some. I would say this is kind of a timid rider problem and what happens when we get down that sutter line and we're in front of a judge we forget to make corrections and or or what i you know what i kind of put it um to my riders is um don't forget to ride yeah yes you know i think we all just get a little bit frozen up there and then we Mm -hmm. say you know for example this um this length and trot to working trot you know sluggish transition give the horse a bit of a kick you yes. know, or if you're holding a whip, if you're if you're used to riding your horse with a whip, and you're you know, don't just hold it, right? I think if you make a correction, I don't see you know most judges you know um, you're not going to have a problem if you just make a quick, you know, kind of instant little correction with that whip. I mean, you know, you don't you're not going crazy and getting aggressive with it, but it's you know, I always say with a whip, it's like it's there for a reason. Go ahead and use it, right? Or horses that get a little fast, or horses that do this, or horses that. You know, uh, throw the shoulder to you know out in the corner. You know, don't be afraid to say, "Hey, get that shoulder back in!" Right? Like, really remember that. You know, uh, a test is just uh, you know you get scores and you get judged on your riding. So don't forget to ride. That's what, how I try and put it in a simple way. And I think a lot of times, and I and I see this with my own students, is goes in and it's going great, da, da, da. and then there's a little problem, and and they don't do anything about it, and then it does. It gets mm-hmm. dragged out over four, five, six movements that it never needed to happen it's okay to say you know make a correction maybe that one movement is a little ugly but if it helps the rest of your test or the rest that's going on go ahead and do that right or you know I, and i see this you know with horses that start to do the same thing get a little slow in the test or get a little sluggish or get a little fast and the rider refuses to make that correction in the ring and then it gets worse every single time because then the horse kind of goes oh, oh i know that while i'm in these you know in in this little white ring my rider doesn't do anything and i get away with a lot of stuff and and that's that can be a little problem that gets to be a bigger problem so i say that you know i say don't forget to ride Get in the ring, make the corrections, and you know even if one movement is a little ugly, the rest maybe are going to be better. And you know that's all I can say about that. I mean, you, you do a lot yeah. of preparation no, to get perfect. in there, yeah. and you know in your preparation, you might be doing all those corrections and doing those things, and then and then getting a little frozen in the ring. So, um, you know, no, I love add, it. adding that to your to your uh, to your tips, I think uh, I think you can have a great test if you just remember to do that, and maybe that test. You know, maybe if you make a correction, there might be some problems. But the next time, if your horse remembers that you're not riding, you know, like you are or you aren't riding, you know, you can help the next test that's going to happen. You know, a lot of times, like you said, just going to schooling shows and just, you know, not just saying like, okay, my score is going to be what it's going to be. It's not the world championships. I want to really get in there and uh, remember to ride and, and show the judge that I know what to do. <coughs> right? Because, you know, I think... You know, I'm not a judge, but I think from judges' perspective, they don't want to see a horse take over and just do the rest of his test on its own without a rider really being effective, right? So, right, right. That's no, my exactly. two cents on that. Maybe, maybe that'll it. help your problem. I hope uh, so. I hope it's all fixed and we're ready for next show season. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. So, good luck. 
And thank you for your tra- for your tips. We love it. We love emails. Um, we're, we are. We're a little backlogged. We love that. So we will try to get to everybody's um, emails in the next couple shows. So keep them coming. We love it and appreciate it. And everybody, you can find our show notes and links to today's guests on our website, dressageradio.com. Well, that pretty much takes care of it. You can find more tips on everything ranging from barn care to websites for horse people on horsetipdaily.com. Just look for the topics drop down menu on the left. And now you can have the Horse Radio Network shows with you wherever you go. Just go to your app store and download our free app for iPhone and Android. And don't forget to support our sponsors here on Horse Tip Daily because they make these podcasts possible. This podcast has been brought to you through the generous support of Kentucky Performance Products. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.